Hi everybody, Dan Ullman taking a look at the Stronach 5 sequence for Friday, November the 22nd. The Stronach 5 sequence will offer a guaranteed gross pool of $100,000, a low 12% takeout. Remember, this is a $1 minimum wager on the Stronach 5. Let's take a look at the field for leg A. It is race number eight at Laurel with an approximate post time of 3.39. And as I do in all of these Stronach 5 videos, I'm going to give you preliminary opinions in horses that I'm thinking of using 48 hours before scratch time with track conditions still up in the air. When it's time for you to make your final decisions in Stronach 5 ticket, I'd urge you use the DRF bets Ticket maker application available obviously with DRF bets and on DRF.com. Utilize Steve Christ's strategy by breaking these horses into A, B, and C categories. In leg A, race number eight at Laurel, it's a ten thousand dollar nominers of two life claimer. The six always forgiven, I think, is a horse you have to use. Trainer Joe Sharp has fantastic statistics when dropping horses at least 50% in claiming price. And he's dropping this horse from 40 to 10. Normally, that would be a red flag for me. But considering Sharp's success rate with these horses, I think you have to use always forgive. And this horse just didn't fire last time out off the claim at Belmont. I don't think he cared for the sealed sloppy track he dealt with that day. And there is a good amount of pace in this big field. If Trevor McCarthy can get a decent spot in mid-pack uh, mid and work out a trip with the six, always forgiven. I think he's a very logical horse, as is the number four, Buck Tooth, who of the locally trained horses, uh, finished ahead of several of these in his most recent start. He saved ground every step of the way. He was chasing a razor sharp horse named Umu, 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 and he's another kind of horse that can sit second or third just off the leaders, maybe benefit from a quick pace up front and get the jump on him. Those are two horses that I'm considering using as my A's. I want backups though at prices. The nine Shawnee P finished behind Bucktooth last time out, but he did a lot of work in that race pressing umu, umu, umu hard for the first half mile before understandably tiring late at a big price. The lead might be his for the taking, and while he might have to go fast yet again, I think he's rounding into good form for trainer Tim Keith. And I also think the 11 Catonsville at 15 to 1 deserves a little bit of a look. This horse is coming off of a maiden win. It was his first start with blinkers, however. He showed big early speed that day. And his jockey, Julio Correa, he had his choice uh, of Catonsville, or buck tooth, he lands on Catonsville. Perhaps that is a tell. I'll use the nine and 11 as Bs, the fours and six as As, in the opening leg of this Friday's Stronach Five. We'll move down to Gulfstream Park West for leg B. It's race number six, one mile on the turf. This is an optional claiming race for three-year-olds and up. And I found this to be a pretty competitive field. I want to use three horses in here. I don't think there's a lot of pace in this race. The number six cause for pardon got a beautiful trip last time out. Saving ground in the pocket, uh, angling three wide at the quarter pole, and getting the job done despite hopping back to his left lead late. This is a horse that was one for 20 seven before that race, but it's quite possible that being claimed by Bob Hess has just changed everything for him. This horse has the tactical speed to work out a similar trip in here. I think he just fits this race like a glove, and a repeat of that 84 buyer will make him tough. Is he the most trustworthy horse in the world? No. That's why I want to use two others. Notorious Nick is a horse who last time out handled Florida breads going a mile at Gulfstream Park West. He got a good pace set up that day, altered course to the outside in the upper stretch, and then ran by everybody late. He's a very consistent horse who sits the board in 70% of his lifetime starts, and I don't think he needs to be far back. I think he's kind of adaptable. And the horse I'm perhaps most interested in at a price is the eight the Mighty Judge. The Mighty Judge last time out was just outrun early, last down towards the rail on the backstretch, altered course to the outside, and he was on the scene late in the game and galloped out very well. He is extremely consistent from a buyer's standpoint. You get the feeling that he's the kind of horse that needs a trip, and he might need a little bit of pace, but I think the Mighty Judge is slowly rounding into form, and in this competitive race, you can use him, and I'm gonna use the six, seven, and eight on equal footing 
in leg B. We'll go back to Laurel for leg C. This is race number nine, completing the Laurel card. It is a one-turn mile event for maiden claimers, 16 down to 14. The seven old length sign for me is really interesting at eight to one for trainer King Leatherberry. This horse has been competing on the turf recently. It's been doing quite well, but the last time he raced on the dirt, he ran in against a couple of next out winners, bobbled badly at the start. Those were maiden special weight horses, and old length sign was just overmatched. Heck, he was 71 to one that day. All things considered, the trip, the competition, he ran pretty well. The fig is okay. He was running on at the end of that race. He's getting a little bit of class relief in here. Eight to one on the morning line. I want to use Auld Lang Syne. Another horse that I want to use as an A is the five. That's Daper's Drink, who's hit the board in his last two races. 16 seems like a really nice spot for him. I know the race that he's coming out of has not come back very strong just yet. But this is a horse that's another, that's adaptable from a pace situation. And I want to use him six to one on the morning line. My two backups are the two Bayano and the nine Dinah's Night. Bayano is being offered for a tag for the first time, and that's just a huge drop at Laurel. Last time out, he ran okay. This is a horse that early in his career had problem with his lead changes. He was a lot better last time out. He didn't contend. He was seventh, but it was in against much better horses. This drop's going to help him. I did find it interesting, though, that Angel Cruz had his choice of Bayano and Dinah's Night, and he ends up on Dinah's Night, a horse that's taken incremental steps forward in just about each and every start. I think he could take another step forward here at five to one. Last time out, he didn't break very well. He ended up down inside. I want to give him one more chance to show what he can do in only his fifth lifetime start, and he should be a decent price as well. So my A's are going to be the five and seven, two decent prices. My B's the two and the nine. Out west we go for leg D, race number three at Golden Gate Fields. This is a maiden special weight for two-year-old fillies, and I want to give a couple of little pedigree notes for you before I finish with my top selections in the Stronach Five. The three lady Crocker's got a beautiful pedigree. This is a daughter of Curlin out of Foxy Socks, who was a multiple stakes winner on turf and synthetic. But you look at this pedigree, you consider turf, you consider distance. This five and a half on the dirt might not be what Lady Crocker is really going to want down the road. Dynasty of her own is a very nice pedigree. The dam was a multiple stakes place dirt sprinter. The sire was a champion two-year-old that won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Dynasty of her own looks interesting with several five furlong workouts on display. I'm not sure I want to take two to one on a first time starter though in a field like this. Yangtze River on the outsides by Painter. The dam though did her best running on the turf. She was stakes placed on that surface. I want one first time starter. I want one experienced runner. Of the experienced runners, the five. My little runaway I think is very, very logical. 59 buyer last time out. Equaled the par for this class level. Was not bad at all in that race. I just think if he improves incrementally off that performance, he's going to be very tough. And the one Kayla's cowgirl, who is the uncoupled stablemate of Dynasty of her own. This is a daughter of Will Take Charge. The dam's a half to a grade one stakes winner named Let Faith Arise, who made the career debut for Tommy Town Thoroughbreds, who also owns Kayla's Cowgirl. The debut was at Golden Gate over a synthetic track sprinting. Let Faith Arise won, ended up becoming a grade one stakes winner. I like this pedigree with a clean break. Kayla's Cowgirl is going to be in this race early. 1 5. I'm trying to go light in leg D. And as we complete this sequence at Gulfstream Park West, race eight, I'm going light as well. I think the seven, Queen of God, might be very, very tough to beat in here. For trainer Alexis Delgado, this is a painter filly who made her career debut going a mile against special weight. Never easy to debut going a mile. This filly showed some speed, prompted uh, the pace on the outside. When she was being outpaced on the turn, she got bounced around a little bit by a couple of horses. It really didn't deter her. She finished evenly. I thought it was a good professional learning effort for her. Now she's dropping in class to the maiden claiming ranks. Blinkers are coming off. A lot of different angles here for Queen of God, a horse that I think is just going to sit a good trip, sitting second in the early portion of this race. If you want to try a couple of horses that I'm not going to be using as of right now, the two, I'll do it my way. The four, Browd out of hell. 
These are horses that are bred to run well on the turf. I'll do it my way. Took money in her career debut on the dirt, showed speed, now is stretching out, is by Jack Milton, who is exclusively a turf horse. Maybe I'll do it my way, will improve, but this is a horse that's going to have to deal with the July layoff and stretching out a quarter of a mile. Brad out of hell is a very nice pedigree. 17 to 1 in her debut, going five furlongs. Maybe she simply wants to stretch her legs around two turns. But for me, I'm going to lean on Queen of God. The number seven in leg E of this Friday's Stronach 5, a guaranteed gross pool of $100,000, low takeout rate, 12%. Remember, this minimum wager, $1. Best of luck.